wrestling showcase is coming up September 3rd, Chicago. Yes. I have Jacob Fatu with me here. It's uh, shaping up to be a big tournament, uh, a lot of attention on this thing. Uh, you you have uh, the opportunity to walk away winning this t- this championship, this accolade, but uh, Steve Macklin in the in the first round, he's uh, kind of proven himself this year as you know an up and coming name, a formidable opponent. Uh, Absolutely. Just how you feeling about going into this tournament and getting to face a guy like him? Well, man, going back to Chicago, man, it's been a couple years since uh, well, I've been back to Chicago, so you know, Chicago kind of actually uh really brought out um you know that's how everybody start to recognize me at first coming out there to a couple of AAW and MLW mm-hmm. but uh speaking about the showcase on September 3rd uh man it's uh just a way to come back you know uh, especially with the tournament having all that big talent on there mm-hmm. uh Macklin man he's a uh, he, he, man he's just like any other worker out here you know but, but but different in his own ways and I mean that in a good way you know mm-hmm. so uh man it's a pleasure though man it's a pleasure and it's good though just to uh get back and uh just get shit cracking uh tatanka and either brian myers or matt cardona are the other part of the bracket that you're on you're on the left side of the bracket uh people that watched uh rick flair's last match saw them they kind of screwed things up in nashville i mean are you looking to get even with one of them both of them is that i mean not to say you're looking past tatanka but you know? Yeah, yeah, that part. Nah, man. I mean, you know, this this is the, the there's all type of different ways though that this bracket can go, you know, and change way. You know, like I said, it's not even just a, a regular uh, indie show, you know, or or just a it's it's a tournament, you know. So, but absolutely, yeah, especially with me uh, going toe to toe with a uh, with a uh, Impact's champ, uh, Josh Alexander. Uh, man, the guy's a beast. He's a fucking machine. But absolutely, man, with uh, Myers and Cardona to come in towards the end. Yeah, man. I mean, the the it, it has to get settled one way or another. I, I think that's my headline right there. Josh Alexander's a fucking machine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right? <laughs> that's I uh I was there for that match. You know, that was probably the one I you know, and it's Ric Flair's last match. That's the event. But like I think you guys I was looking forward to seeing the most, and we didn't really get a, a clear finish. Exactly. Uh, how does that rematch go down? Like what, what, how do you see that playing out in the future? I mean, that was left where the fans want more. So how do you see that going down? Yeah. You know what? I mean, it, man, it just goes back to two cats, man, just uh, putting everything on the line and dedicating their lives, you know, uh, to professional wrestling. And, you know, I'm talking about me and Josh Alexander. So with that being said, uh, you know, it's going to, it's definitely going to, it's definitely going to happen. You know, uh, why wouldn't it, you know, and it wouldn't happen just because uh, the fans want it to happen or just because, you know, um, you know, uh, because uh, that's just the match build up or anything. I, I think it needs to happen because, man, it's just uh, it was a uh, it was already going well uh, uh, over there. Ric Flair's match in Nashville. But, um, you know, I, I, I would feel a whole lot better if there was some closure at the end of the match, you know, just between us two. Yeah. Yeah. I think uh I think Josh is the one that told me he he knew your work from AAW. Um, yes. So you guys have kind of crossed paths over the years, not absolutely, you know. absolutely, absolutely, man. I mean, man, we cross paths, you know, in and out. You know, um, he's seen me work. I mean, I mean, you know, because man, well, when when you're on shows with other cats, you know, you, you tend to see cats here and there, and and the same cats popping up around the same show. That you know, that must mean you know they're doing something, you know. Yeah. But not only that, man, like. Uh, I'm a big fan of tag team wrestling, you know, with the Steiner brothers and everything. And, you know, I kind of, you know, you know I mean, he just got that look to him. You know, don't nobody look like Josh Alexander. You know, don't nobody look like Jacob Fatu, the small werewolf, you know. Yeah. But, um, yeah, man, no, uh, we start, first started out in Chicago. Once again, this goes back to Chicago. September 3rd, baby, the whole tournament again. You know, matter of fact, Josh is actually, uh, him and Moose actually came into the tournament. You know, mm-hmm. so I mean, hell, man, you might get a rematch later on that night. You know, who knows? You know, like I said, it's not a regular independent show; it's a tournament. So, and it, you know, things are liable to happen, and things are, you know, it could go, uh, uh, it could go any way. Crazy to think, like uh, when Josh was talking to me about like you guys working in Chicago and stuff. Nashville was actually your first singles match together, so you know, maybe that yeah. happens. Maybe we get that in Chicago, but I don't, I don't want to look past you know what you have up uh in the first round potentially in the second round with you know exactly exactly you 
know, and, 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 you know, this goes back to once again, like they say in this business, man, everything is timing. And, you know, like, even though we didn't meet in AAW back then, like, there was no better timing than to be in Nashville, Tennessee for Ric Flair's last match on a platform like that in front of a, a, a crowd like that. And, you know, not only that, in front of, uh, man, there was so many different companies there, you know, don't there's so many different promotions there. And, you know, we ain't talking about just what the promotion has to offer, man. We're talking about the best of the best. Mm -hmm. So, you know, absolutely. That was the first time me and uh, Us has ever tapped in, you know, but uh, it was great, man. It was good. Overall, it was really good. You know, overall, it was a good look. It was a good turnout. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, I've become a fan of your work through MLW. Uh, I, I know that I was at the event. I didn't realize it until now, but that uh, super fight in Philadelphia was actually your first event with them. You made your debut. I was there. I think that was my first MLW show. Period. Oh yeah, yeah. So, you know, that's I, right. And, and Philly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, it, check check this out, man. That one actually didn't air. Uh -huh. You know. Yeah, it was crazy. So you're absolutely right. And uh, that was the same day. And that that was actually all of our first time uh, there. Uh, that that was when me, Joseph Samael, Hammerstone, uh, Warner. You know, I think MJF was already there at the time. You mm -hmm. know, yeah. Lucha Bros, uh, Harry Smith there. Yeah, man, it was, man, when I came into MLW, man, it was a, uh, it was a real good look for all of us. The Von Erics were there. So absolutely. Yeah. And, you know, obviously the company's changed, the roster's changed, uh, but, you know, you, you've evolved as well. They've allowed you to, you know, you went from having a manager, you went, you did the Contra unit, um, now what I've really enjoyed is, and you could see it coming off as we're talking right now, you have, you know, tons of charisma, personality. Uh, uh, one of the things I really enjoyed was when you guys hawked all the stuff from Caesar, uh, Caesar's office and you, know, oh, you were yeah. selling stuff, which actually might've been outside of, it was either the <laughs> Dallas or Philly taping again this year. Yeah. 2300 arena, man. Legendary. Yeah. So there you go. Philly, Philly book, book ending it. But, uh, What's it been like for you just kind of getting to show that side of you? I mean, the, you were built as this, like, you know, Simone, Simone werewolf, silent, badass assassin. Yeah. What's it been like for you getting to show a new side? Well, you know like, what, man? You know, that's just me being me. You know, if anybody knows me for sure in the business, they know, like, I was just, I, I've always been the same. You know, I, I haven't, you know, one thing, man, you really try to play that character outside uh, and, and, you know, in the real life, you know, it's really going to get you beat up for real, for real. So, you know, it's just being myself, man. That's it, man. Just, just, just that's it. Don't switch up for nobody, you know, because people going to love you for who you are. Mm -hmm. But uh, overall, I mean, throughout that transition with the Contra there, with Simon Gotch, uh, you know, uh, Mads. Um, I mean, man, we had Vari, Joseph Samael there. Um, you know, it, it, it was good for the Contra. It was also good to have that solo run as well. But um, right now, we speak about right now, it's good to have uh, Juicy for now, um, Big Toko, um, you know, uh, uh, one of the close family members. And it's also good to have my cousin Lance on Hawaii, you know, sign with the company that I'm signed with right now, MLW Major League Wrestling. And uh, it's just good to see them. It's good to, it's good to platform for them. And, you know, it's just uh, it's just, man, just like what Farouk said back in the day, man, you know, times evolve, man. You got to move with the times, you know, and uh, you just got to stay fresh and stay relevant. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the things that it's affected everyone, but obviously, you know, pandemic comes into play. MLW was yeah. at, in, they, you know, every, everybody got in front of it and said, you know, we're we're watching the situation had to change some tapings. Uh, but is there anything that you maybe didn't get to do with Contra that, you know, you thought was a good idea? Maybe it just couldn't work in the current situation. Like anything that. Man, I I felt like it should have been war games um, when two rings, you know, they was doing, or I don't know if it was called war game. I mean, I might be saying the name wrong, you know, but I think um, it was war chamber. Or chamber, I, it I was, think they switch. I don't remember. Yeah, they yeah, did switch it. I think. Yeah, well, you know, MLW was known for having that way back in the day. You know, with a yeah. four 
Dabu and um, Dusty Rhodes and everybody. You know, I thought it would have been cool to have uh, our teams up in there. You know, it could have been Contra versus the Hart Dynasty or Contra, you know, versus the Von Erics and the Hart Dynasty up in there, you know, in two rings. You know, what what is being surrounded around cages? Um, that probably would have been it. Um, it probably would have been felt, felt better to have Contra, you know, collect all the gold, you know, and I'm not saying that right now because, you know, uh, we know the tribal chief and the Usos right now, you know, what they're doing over there. But, you know, it would have been good, you know, for Contra to keep everything and, uh, you know, probably have a little bit more six man tags with them, eight man tags with them. Um, but uh, overall, though, man, shout out to all the Contra fans, because even though Contra's not together right now, when I still, uh, you know, while I'm still making states and cities and shows, you know, there's, there's always the Contra shirt, man, or there's always the Contra flag flying around. So, uh, man, just shout out to uh, all the Black Hand followers out there for the Black Flag. One of the things I'm looking forward to, uh, the the Battle Riot tapings, uh, they took place in June. MLW's on hiatus right now. Without, yes. Without getting too much into it, uh, there's, you know, some notable things that happened for you. There's yeah. some notable things that happened overall that move the story forward. Uh but, uh, I mean, do you have any update on when MLW comes back? I know there's tapings set you know up, what? but do you know when it's... Because that Battle Riot footage is like, it's, it's there, just... and I'm waiting for it. So. Yeah. yeah, I'm waiting for it. Core Brower, MSL, man, y'all need to drop it now, ASAP. <laughs> you know? Nah, but, uh, man, you know what? Uh, we, uh, well, we were back at uh, Queens at the Bell Rose uh, Ballroom, I believe. In New York, once again, uh, shout out to all the fans in New York. I mean, man, Philadelphia, New York, and Chicago has just been crazy, you know, when it comes to my career. But, mm -hmm. you know, touch bases back on the battle ride. You know, I mean, man, we had some heavy hitters in there. You know, we had a lot of shocking returns, you know, a lot of good returns, you know, may I say. And, and I'm not just talking about one, two. I'm talking about four of them. And, uh, you know, within that four of those returns, man, like, you know, it, it was probably the uh, one of the best – I actually, this was actually one of uh, my. This is actually my first uh, official battle ride. The other uh, first battle, the first one, you know, it really I won't even count it because we try to go light people on fire around that time. But um, yeah, absolutely, man. Uh, Queens Bell Rose uh, Ballroom, MLW Major League, uh, and they need to drop the footage. I mean, it was a lot of good things that happened. And uh, man, I'm man. This is MLW's, you know, one of the top stars right now, trying to tap in and tell them to drop it, you know. But overall, man, it was good. Uh, the fans enjoyed it. Uh, loyal fans was there. Uh, new fans was there. And I think it's just, I think it'll be a good look. But then again, once again, this goes back to timing, man. Timing yeah. is everything. So hopefully, the time will get right, man, and we'll drop it uh, anytime soon. <laughs> Looking forward to it. Uh, I'll let you go on this. Whether it's fans waiting for MLW to come back, whether it's they want a preview of the wrestling showcase, any match from your career, uh, whether it's recently or not, uh, that you feel like, you know, you presented a complete wrestler, like your, your most well-rounded match that you would point to and be like, here's the one to go check out. Here's your, you know, here's who you're going to get in Chicago this coming weekend. Man, I feel like it'll be, um, uh, you know, once again, the, the La Parker match that happened in Chicago. So they're going to get that, you know, they're going to they're definitely going to see that side. But I would say the Hammerstone, uh, the, the the Hammerstone, uh, me and Hammerstone uh, for the belt. And I also mm -hmm. would say uh, the um, this crazy ass match, man, I have with Mads Kruger, you know, in Philly. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, they're definitely going to get that side. You know, yeah, you see Jacob Fatu off camera being myself doing me. But man, there's always a light switch, though, uh, you know, right before I walk out there. And uh, it's not just that's how it's booked or that's the gimmick or that's what we need. No, fuck that. This is 100 percent. This is what they get. And this is what this is all they're going to get. 110 percent, especially when I'm walking out there, because it's not just the work. It's not a gimmick. You know, man, this is my family, my children, you know, my wife, you know, uh, uh, my legacy, the Samoan dynasty, everything that I got to hold on my back just to get through and keep that name without writing off of, you know, my family members. You know, they're going to get that pure, uncut werewolf shit. Jacob Fatu. Coming from the gutter, man. I, I can't think of any other way to, you know, close this out. Uh, confident. I admire it. You know, love the attitude. Wrestling Showcase is September 3rd. If you can yes, be there sir. in Chicago, go check it out. If not, watch it on Fight. Stay tuned for MLW. 
coming yeah. back soon. Uh, Jacob Fatu, thanks for your time, man. I really appreciate it. Appreciate the love, man. September 3rd. See y'all soon.